So you've heard people say, you need to repent. You're a sinner, repent. Well, how do you repent? How? What is it? How do you do this? Well, I'm going to show you this video because I've done it and you can do it too, my friend. We're going through Romans chapter 2 and we're seeing that, man, everybody, all, we all sin, my friend, everybody. God says that. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the Tanakh. In, in the Psalms, it says David wrote that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, then how can we make it? How do we even make it to heaven? I'm going to show you in this video. It's going to bring great value to you. In fact, it's the greatest thing ever that you could ever imagine having and give, getting in your entire life. It's through Jesus Christ and you, my friend, can be saved. All right? I've seen it work in my own life. When I was 13 years old, I gave my life to Christ and it was like that dirty, heavy, weighty, messy bag of sin that was weighing me down was cast off me. And the greatest sense of, uh, that I had, the, the feeling that I had, was this sense of freedom. Freedom and God filling my heart with his love and his peace. And that could be you too, my friend. And you're going to find out how in this video. So Romans chapter 2, this is where we are now, and this is the great chapter because it shows you that you need God, and when you understand that, that's when you're going to receive Him, and that's where we're at right now. So it starts this way. It says, but because of your stubbornness, because of your stubbornness, an unrepentant heart, what does that word mean, repent, anyway? Well, that just means simply turning to God, going toward God going away from your way and the sinful way of this world and turning and going his way, walking with him. That's relationship. So you're, when you're unrepentant, you don't want to walk with him at all. So in your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself. Who wants wrath stored up for themselves? I don't, okay? If you're in your right mind, you won't either. On the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, because God is righteous and we deserve his judgment because of our sin, right? That's what happens. Who will repay each person according to his deeds? So there's this thing called the great white throne judgment, and you do not want to be a part of this judgment because there's a what's called the Bema judgment or the Bema seat of Christ. It's the kindness and the gifts. It's just good gifts that you're going to receive if you are a believer and follower in Jesus Christ. That one, in my opinion, that one comes after the seven-year tribulation period where we receive gifts for all of the good works we did in pure motivation through Jesus Christ, the good stuff, and we get rewards for it. That's called the Bema seat of Christ. But the great white throne judgment comes later after the 1,000-year reign of Christ. And that's the one that you do not want to be standing before because that's the one where everybody is going to be judged according to their deeds. And, it's, and, and they're not covered in Jesus Christ. They're not covered in his righteousness. So they're just going to get the punishment that they deserve. Some much greater than others. I mean, you know... There's different levels of heaven. There's also different levels of hell. <laughs> you know, Jesus talked about it, so I'm not going to argue with him. So that's what you don't want to end up going to is the great white throne. So Romans chapter 2 continues. It says, To those who, by perseverance in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. How do you receive immortality, my friend? It's through Jesus. And if you're my friends in Israel, it's through Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Messiah. That's how. There's no other way. He said it. It's true. Everything he said is true. So you have to go through him and you will find eternal life. Jesus said, I am the life. He is the only way. And that's what you have to do, my friend. So he will give eternal life. Now, what was that previous scripture? To those who by perseverance in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But to those who are self-serving and, and do not obey the truth, 
oh, this is a big thing today, right? I mean, even where I work, I live in Washington State, which is very woke. You know, it's into this this new cultish movement that's spreading across our country and the world in a lot of places. And it's this weird movement that, you know, they don't believe there's a absolute truth. Your truth is not my truth and whatever. Everybody could have their own truth. That's why you have kids walking around thinking that they're animals now, identifying as animals and things like that, because of that crazy theology, which is actually, it's an occult. It's a doctrine of, of Satan, really. It's, it's bad stuff. So that scripture said, right, it said, but to those who are self-serving and do not obey the truth, there's only one truth, and that's Jesus Christ, my friend. He's the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can go to the Father except through him. So, and it continues here in Romans. It says, but obey unrighteousness. These are the people that are disobeying. They obey unrighteousness. He will give wrath and indignation. That's not a good thing, guys. So there will be tribulation and distress for every soul of mankind who does evil, for the Jew first and also for the Greek or the Gentile, you could say. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who does what is good. So what is good? Good, my friend, is believing in Jesus. There's no other way. You have to believe in him and take on his righteousness. He imputes his righteousness on us who believe and follow him, who trust him right? Abraham believed and it was accounted to him. God accounted to him as righteousness. Believing, that's how. How were people saved in the Old Testament? The same way they're saved in the New Testament, by grace through faith. Trusting and believing and receiving that free gift of God's grace. That's what Abraham did. And that's what you can do too. And you must do it now in this new covenant through Jesus Christ. So that's what we're looking at, guys. So here we are. But glory and peace and honor and peace to everyone who does what is good. To the Jew first and also to the Greek or the Gentile, right? For there is no partiality with God. God looks at everyone exactly the same way. Way. Now, some people say, see, it proves that God has nothing to do with Israel anymore. That's not true, my friend. Nations, he does have a plan with the nation of Israel. Now, as far as salvation goes, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're Jewish or you're Greek or you're Gentile or Scottish. I'm mostly Scottish. I have like 1% Jewish blood, but I'm mostly Scottish and some English. And so it doesn't matter whether you're what ethnicity you are, you have to go through Jesus. If you're Jewish, you have to go through Yeshua Mashiach to be saved. Now, there is a day coming where where God, where Jesus is going to show who he is to the nation of Israel, and they as a nation that at one moment in time will believe in him and receive him. Just like Joseph's story, right? He was rejected and despised by his own, sold for silver. He ended up getting falsely accused and sent to this place of the condemned, And it was there that two, he told the fate of two, just like Jesus was on the cross with two. One lived, one was cursed, right? Then he was raised up out of that place of the contempt, brought before the throne. He was the only one found worthy to reveal God's future plan. And he was exalted and glorified by he who sat on the throne. Then he had a Gentile bride, right? And then he saved during that seven-year time of Jacob's trouble, that great famine over all the world, He saved who? Israel. All of Israel was saved. And that's the plan that God has with the nation of Israel in the future. Romans chapter 11 makes that very clear. So there's no partiality with God as far as each individual person goes. You must go to Jesus to be saved. There's no other way, my friend. All right? All right, let's continue on in the scriptures. So there's no partiality with God. Okay, huge, huge, huge. We're going to go into the rest of Romans chapter 2 in the next episode, my friend. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm excited. I hope you will join because this book will bless you beyond measure. This book has sparked great revivals in history. In fact, the last one was the Jesus Revolution. There's a movie coming out about that, and the Jesus Revolution with Chuck Smith 
out of Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, which, by the way, he was a great supporter of Israel, and so was Billy Graham, and they were friends. And it's just amazing that God used him to do this. There was this massive revival. I was a little, little, very like a toddler, young boy when this was going on in the 70s, and I remember God's presence. It was powerful. The Holy Spirit was being poured out in a way I can't even describe to you. It was like he was in the air and there was a warmness and God's love and his peace in the air. It was undeniable. It was real. And I hope we get another revival like that, my friend. So <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, you can receive him by a simple prayer, my friend. You may feel co uh, conviction in your heart about your sin, and that's a good thing. But you may also feel the knocking on the door of your heart. God knocks on the door of your heart. He says, let me in. Jesus is saying, let me in. And the Holy Spirit convicts your heart in that way. If that's speaking to your heart, you feel sorry for your sin, you want to receive God and his forgiveness, you just say this prayer after me. Because this is a broken and messed up world, and you won't find peace in this world. You only find peace through God, through Jesus Christ. All right? If that speaks to your heart and you want to receive Christ and follow him as your Lord and as your Savior, you can do that right now. Say this prayer after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this moment forward. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, my friend. Hey, my friend, God loves you and he saved you now. You may be feeling something tremendous right now. You may not be feeling anything at all. It doesn't matter. We go off of what the word of God says and you put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ. So God bless you, my friend. All right. I'll see you guys next time. We're going to continue on in Romans chapter 2.